All right, thanks everybody for your patience. We just had some minor, minor technical problems where things decided to just crash on us for fun. Um, but it looks like we're back and everything is working. So my name is Elizabeth White. Today, um, I'm from the Bethesda User Research Team and I'm gonna be talking, giving a talk on, the, on a break, the returning player experience. Um, so today I'm gonna cover a few different topics related to the returning player experience focused on user research. So first, why do returning players matter to you as a user researcher? What kind of games do players return to? What's unique about returning players as a research cohort? And how can user researchers help test the returning player experience? So first, a little bit more about me. Um, so as I said, my name is Elizabeth White. I have a PhD in developmental psychology from Penn State. So my focus of all of my academic research was on how people learned things. Um, I'm currently a senior user researcher focused on accessibility for the Bethesda user research team. This is not an accessibility talk today. Um, this is just kind of a fun um, exercise for all of us to think about. I work on a variety of different game genres at various stages of development. And in my spare time, I'm an MMO player and I'm a former World of Warcraft influencer and blogger. Um, so the topic of returning players is something personal to me. Um, on the slide is a picture of me at the National Video Game Museum and my World of Warcraft Guild. My World of Warcraft Guild formed in the Wrath of the Lich King expansion under the name Undying Resolution. We've been fielding large raid groups continuously with many of the same core people in our community. Um, and our guild, in our guild, people take breaks and come back. Since breaks are a healthy thing for people as their lives change over the decades, people coming back don't always remember everything and things have changed since they left, which causes frustration for all of us in the community. Um, in this case, this is a picture of our 10 year anniversary from a number of years ago um, of my guild members. Um, every year we would have anniversary parties and celebrate coming together. We would have people who had kids and went away for a while because their partner was like, ripping the cords out of the walls of like, you need to pay attention to your kid. And then, a, you know, a decade later, we're all still playing. They're like, now my kid's older, they, they're gonna come join our guild and play with us, right? Um, so this is, uh, returning players is something that we live and breathe every day as players in really long standing communities. So that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So why do returning players matter? Uh, first, they're often long term members of your community. BI data and an analytics and game telemetry tells us the amount of time since the player is last logged in. Um, your game may consider players lapsed if they haven't logged in for three, six months, a week, whatever your you know, other teams define a lapsed player as. Um, and that's gonna vary from game to game. However, lapsed players aren't all the same group of people. A user research can measure why they left and if they plan to come back. Maybe they just went on vacation, like this nice beach here, you take some time off, and BI is like, oh, you lapsed, but you were just out on the beach. <laughs> um, so we can talk about some public numbers that we have. Um, so there was a paper published in 2019 from Bergstrom that surveyed lapsed players um, and showed 58% of the lapsed players from a Facebook game called Yo World, they just said they were on a break. Only 19 people of the, 19% of the people responding to their survey said they permanently quit. That's a lot of potential returning players. External con constraints on their leisure time was the primary reason they stopped playing. It wasn't something about the game itself. They just are on a break. So situational reasons can impact play behaviors and they'll say I'm too busy or my friends stopped playing or something happened in their lives and I'm just on a break, I'm too busy. But I plan on going back to that again someday. We know from a GDC talk in 2015, uh, Mansell's talk on returners and retention, that he said that 65% of, of RuneScape players had taken a break longer than three months and that people were returning one to 10 years later to their game. Um, so we know, we've known for a while that returning players matter. Um, and so if you wanna hear more about the design side considerations, I highly re recommend this 2015 talk on how they brought people back to their game. So what kind of games do players return to? I've mostly talked about like MMOs or sort of more casual types of things. Um, 
So our most obvious genres players are going to return to our, li our live service games and our multiplayer games, our MMOs, who are rejoining their friends and their communities. But we also have games that want to sell DLC or other post-launch content or update their games or have remakes or ports to new platforms. We're always putting out that same game we made forever ago and asking people to play it again, right? Um, people want to play old games to prepare, prepare for a new genre release for a new release in that series. So you're like, all right, they're gonna have a new one come out. I wanna go back to that one. Maybe I didn't finish it, and I need to do a couple more levels. Can I go back and finish that game without having to start over from scratch? So it matters for all games. Anyone can return to any game in their Steam library, in their other you know, platforms. Anyone can play any game at any time, unless it's no longer available and it's buried in like, the trash somewhere and you can't get to it anymore, as if the game exists, someone can return to it. So we want to kind of have these conversations with our dev teams and ask them, um, first, does your game team plan on having people still playing the game more than a few months after the game releases? Second, do they plan on supporting the game with any kind of game updates whatsoever? If the answer is yes to either of those questions, the returning player experience matters to that game and those devs. And it's a cohort of players that they need to be considering across the entirety of the game's development and life cycle. Returning player guides pop up for all kinds of games and genres all over the internet. The returning player experience already matters to lots of people in our studios and our um, community. And the media is putting out guides. Your influencers are putting out guides. Everyone's writing these returning player guides. But they mostly live on the internet. And we have to go find them. So what's unique about this returning player experience? Now that we know that these people are existing and they're coming back to our games, what are they running into? Coming back to games often feels bad. So games often exclude people from the community who want to return to the games by offering a bad returning player experience. What prompted me to do this talk was watching people on social media describe the experiences they had trying to return and not having a good time. They love this game, they love this franchise, they can't go back and picked up where they left off. They just get overwhelmed with data and information and they're just struggling. Um, so oftentimes, I'm seeing people having to delete a save and restart so they can play the onboarding experience, but now they've lost all their progress. They can't just do the tutorial and then go back to where they left off. That save's gone forever and then may they, maybe they never get to finish and see the last half of the game because they're always having to replay that first half. Um, you also see people who just end up picking up a DLC, not being able to play it, and then just churning. They're just like, I give up. I can't get back into this. As far back as 1885, Herman Ebbinghaus described how poor human memory can be. So I very often say human memory sucks. This is the accessibility researcher coming out. Humans have terrible memories. They forget things. Um, so I graphed some fake data here on the slide. It just starts at 100% and over a very you know, fast amount of time, you forget most everything, right? If you're just learning like a list of words. We've known this forever. Humans are really bad, so we have to help them remember things. When we think about our sort of long-term players who are on a break, their you know, memory curve might be slower. So I, faked some, I put up some fake example data of someone like forgetting over the course of weeks little bits of information. You're forgetting your controls. You're forgetting where you left off in the story. You're forgetting all the details of the complex game system mechanics slowly over time. But we can't always predict what all information they're going to forget. And it's going to vary from person to person how long their break is, how long they were playing before they left. Um, they'll remember something when they come back. They're not going to come back totally fresh, you know, blank slates. So we need to think about the mazes we're making our players go through and the unique considerations. 
Um, so these players pose some unique challenges that don't exist for new players or current players to the game, leading this group to be kind of a unique cohort of players that we need to consider. Um, these players need to quickly relearn how to play the game while using existing characters or game saves. They expect to be re-onboarded to the game and catch up very quickly on any changes and anything that they've forgotten. Providing either too much or too little information to these players could easily overwhelm them and they'll just give up and then, then they become your turn players. So how can user researchers help with improving this experience for players? Our UR team can survey our lapsed players who view themselves as just being on the, to find the people who are just on a break. So we can ask how likely are they to play more in the future? Why did they stop playing? Do they plan to return to it someday? And what, they would, what would motivate them to come back? Where are kind of our re-entry points back into the experience? So, so for example, are they just playing World of Warcraft for so many decades, they take the last four months off before the new expansion. It's super common, you know, in an MMO, you're like, all right, that new expansion's coming up, I'm taking my vacation. Like, we all just need, we've been doing this for so many years, we just need a break. But now we have to come back and now I've forgotten the controls. <laughs> um, so we can think about um, where, how we might include potential returner players into the research for live games. It's possible and likely often done for all the people that have been nodding in the room the whole time. Um, we can bring lapse players back into our lab te tests to look at the new content, the DLC, the game updates um, for an existing game. It's still useful to bring people back to your live game content when you've got downtime between other research that you're running to see how that returning player experience feels. Um, for these types of tests, we're looking to screen for potential participants based on when they last played the game and their interest in future play. We wanna bring back people who feel they're part of the community and are open to returning and avoid bringing back the people who permanently lapsed and have no interest in coming back because you're thinking about the people who are writing right now to be part of your community again. It's also possible to run surveys after new content releases for measuring natural play experiences of returning players. I already know some games know when I come back because I got an email welcoming me back. We can send those people our surveys. Somebody has that data if they have email addresses and they track telemetry. Um, we can ask questions related to the returning player experience for these players. For example, what confuses them about newly introduced mechanics or content? What information do they need to search out for on the websites that are telling them how to get back into the game? And are they interested in continuing playing? Did your systems work and get them back into the game or not? We can run remote studies for live games to let people play from their home on their own time. Um, for our live games. So it's possible to do longer remote play tests for people um, on their, at their own home, on their own time, with their own existing characters. And it's possible to use daily check-ins, asking for their experience, why they played, have they played today, why or why not, um, and allow players to give feedback about why they want to lapse and provide an out for them to take their final survey at any point in time for prorated incentives or whatever you have to do to let people churn and tell you why they're churning instead of just losing participants from your data. Because some of these people are gonna be like, F this, throw their controller or keyboard across the wall and you want them to give you your survey data first. <laughs> um, so we also still have this problem for new games before you've released it out to the wild. So what do we do for a game that hasn't released and doesn't have lapsed players? Will you create lapsed players every time you run a new player playtest? So in addition to any repeated internal employee testing across milestones where you have natural breaks between play periods for these people, you can think about any new player that comes into your lab test as creating potential lapse players. You have people who are like, yeah, I definitely want to play this again, but I'm not going to get to for three years. You can bring them back at any time to play any build because you want to care about how they're getting re-onboarded back into the game. Um, so you can either do planned retesting where you take a group of people, keep their saves in the build, and put it back, them back into it weeks or months later, depending on what your testing cycle might be, or just drop them in the experience 
even if you'd normally never ever invite them back again, you can think about how you can test re-onboarding people in a returning player experience if you do it in a curated, crafted, smart way. We can also think about our sort of general gameplay considerations uh, to help our dev teams make good informed choices before we have to bring people back. Um, so how are people looking at the tutorials and controls and information about the complex systems? Are we designing um, practice areas or on-demand tutorials or places people can go and just be like, I need a couple minutes to figure this out. I can't just jump straight into that boss fight. I need to be like, which way, is, what button do, does what? How do they get to relearn those controls? We can think about um, making sure that our games have more than one save slot. So if you need to start over again, you don't have to lose your main progression. We can think about um, if, uh, we can think about, um, I forgot to put animations on here. Um, so we also want to think about how players review previous and current objectives. So we want to make it easy to remember and continue where the, from where they left off. Um, so if your objective log has super vague, like go find somebody or do something, or be like, I don't remember who that is, I don't remember where they are, how am I gonna get there, right? So we wanna think about like, if you put a game down and come back a year later, or is the objective log gonna make sense? And if, if not, what structures are we giving people to get back into that? Um, if you have an evolving live game, how do players like review new content and patch changes as they go along. Are we summarizing that info and giving them breadcrumbs to help get them back into our new content? Um, all right, so then I have the two resources that I um, included in the talk, so you guys can go find those references later. Um, and then uh, does anyone have any questions? Um, if you want to find me, I'm on Twitter at Restokin and um, on Mastodon at peoplemaking.games at Lasana. All right, so that's. <laughs> All right, that's my rant. So does anyone have questions? <laughs> oh, okay, over here. All right, so the question was, if you're creating lapsed players, do you bring them back as a whole group or as individual players? You can do it either way. So you can like bring people back. You can, you can it's probably gonna be hard to schedule the same group of people everybody to do a second one. So you might have a smaller group for your returning test than your original one. It really kind of depends on what your research cadence is, whether you're just like, all right, this group is gonna be the player, the group we make turn players from. But you wanna kick out the person who gave you a one, said this game sucks, I hate it, I don't ever wanna do this. So you wanna bring back the people who want to come back, right? The people who are like, yeah, I wanna play this again and bring them back and be like, now it sucks because I don't remember anything. That those are the people you want to find. So it might be that you're pulling a subset of people from previous playtests based on who makes the most sense to bring back, who represents your returning players. Um, and it's going to vary so much from game and genres. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the question was, how do you talk to your devs about it's about it being healthy for people to take breaks from the game? Um, I think a lot of our devs already understand that they take breaks from games, right? You have to engage them on like you know their ex experiences, and our community teams are really good resources in live service MMO games and you know, like in the trenches dealing with those people. So you can bring in people from other teams outside of user research to sort of show those voices and represent the players. 
Um, I think it's just sort of a growing reality of like, I'm doing this talk so I can give the talk to my devs, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> that this is this is a conversation that we need to be having. Like, I need to take break. I needed to take break from from games when I had a baby. I did, wasn't sleeping. I wasn't in a space where I could play all of these big, complicated games. I went to do just little like phone. I could only play with one hand. So if the game required two hands and I couldn't play it holding a baby, like I couldn't do it. Right? Like you can just like have those conversations. So I'll just talk to my devs about times I took breaks from games. Right? that like it's a natural human thing of like you can get burned out from games just like you can from anything else right like i played world of warcraft from the time it launched to i still play today but i would had to take mental health breaks from the thing i play every day because it's not good for me right like there's certain times where it's like i need a vacation from this thing i need to go do something else and now i want to come back right so i play house flipper um, and I play House Flipper off and on for like, I don't know how many years it's been out, but they keep putting out new content. So I'll take breaks and I'll be like, today I want to build a house. So I just go back to the game and I play it a little bit. I get what I need out of that and then I put it away for eight months. My Steam chart's like, you played this game, you took a break. You played this game, you took a break, right? <laughs> That's just how people play games. There's too many new games coming out, right? You, you're gonna spend two weeks binging on this game and then go back to your home base. So if your game's the home base people are going back to, you have to care about letting people go and come back, right? And the cadence of how we release content have really easy, like, this is our coming back point, right? We already know for games that are releasing DLC, you want people to come back for DLC. They might not still be playing your game every single day. You want them to come back at your new release. Um, so those are the obvious places. It's harder for a game, for some types of games than others, to think about that re-entry. But it's also, they want to know about their last players. And so you can bring them the data of like this many people said they were on a break. They're not actually lapsed. That's a great thing. The devs are like, oh, they don't hate us, right? They just had a baby. Like, that is great. Devs like that, right? <laughs> they want to know they, it's not their fault. All right. Um, over here, yeah, go ahead. All right, so the question is about for your actual turn players who are like F this and bounced out and reacquiring them. That takes a lot of effort, but a lot of, there's some people are who are just done done. Like you just can't reacquire them. And it's okay to let those people go. The people who are like, maybe it depends on the content, they're still reading our social feeds and websites and watching stream. Like there's still people who are engaged around the community that can get reacquired easier or harder. And uh, let me go back a slide. Uh, Mansell's returning returners and retention covers that from the design side of what they do and how they retarget acquisition because um, it's all about winning back those lapsed players. So his talk's going to do that a better job of that because he's the designer. Um, and I'm just the researchers being like, there's a cohort over here that we need to think about and talk about. <laughs> um, so he's going to do a much better job of answering that sp specific question. Was there someone over? Oh, yeah. So how, um, so, sorry, let me kind of. Um, the main part is like, mm -hmm. what do you believe is the place that the researchers are required to All right, um, so the question is about, you've got a, com a group of people who aren't ta taking breaks and how we get those communities to kind of welcome back um, returning players. Um, so you've got, 
So I think returning players who go, are going back to a social game and a social experience, as someone who's done recruitment for guilds in an MMO, we almost always are having to find new people. Anytime someone takes a break, we have to replace them with somebody. So people who want to come back just have to find the community that's welcoming to them. Um, and is open to bringing them back. So it's for your like players who are playing constantly, um, some of them just aren't gonna be welcoming and researchers can't really, m you can't make your community behave a certain way unless you give structure and things in the game and your systems around it that help with that. So like um, games that put in like looking for guild, you know, looking for community, community finder things for people to be able to, you know, get and apply in the game. But a lot of the time we're doing stuff outside the games because the inside the games don't have places to build those communities. Um, so like if I'm doing recruitment for a guild, I'm going to where the players are. The players are on Reddit. I'm making posts on Reddit for my mobile guild to recruit them to recruit people, right? And I don't care if it's someone who like took a break and came back as long as they fit our culture and that type of thing. So I think it's really tough because we have to build, because we're building systems and communities and the designer researchers can work on understanding the communities, but we can't necessarily make communities welcome returning players. We have to build systems that welcome the players and don't rely on the external community to do the work for, for the game. That's, it's a tough question and I don't know if I answered it or not. So I will, I'll follow back up on social media with, the, with that person if I need it, clarify, if I'm not answering the right question. Um, so the question is, was about differences between players who had taken long breaks or more recent breaks. Um, I think it just, imp so the length of the break is not gonna, imp the amount of time they played before they took their break and the length of the break bo are both gonna impact how much they remember. But what you're gonna have to do is measure how much they remember, regardless of what the source of forgetting is. Um, so you're still going to have to have an individual, uh, you're not going to be able to find an average lapsed player, an average returning player. You're going to have to look at across like a bunch of different people with a bunch of different experiences. Where are the gaps that we're finding that people are falling through? So we didn't put a control scheme in our game. People can't remember the controls. They're having to look it up online. That's a pretty easy fix. We just then add the control scheme in to support that in the game instead of making people go to websites. Um, and really it's just, a, lapsed players are just part of our community already. And they're just players. And so you're gonna use the same approach as you use for any other players, just including them in addition to the other kinds of cohorts you're doing. And I don't think we've done and talked enough about that experience across all of our games for me to have a very specific you know answer to like we don't know that because we don't talk about them enough All right, um, so the question is about games that just have back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back events and content constantly coming out. I think we burn players out and overwhelm them if we don't give them natural downtimes. Um, that um, I think we need to have content and keep them engaged, but the approach of everybody has to play five hours every day of their life for 20 years is unsustainable. Right? It's just not sustainable. We can't do it in our jobs. We can't do it in our private lives. We can't burn people out. So I think, and people are just gonna take a season off, right? They're just gonna be like, this season, I have, fine, I have 
my last semester of college, I'm just gonna take it off. So I think it's fine if people naturally just are like, this season I'm not doing in a season-based game. I think people will make their own breaks because there's so many factors, but I just, uh, and I don't know how much we sort of look at and share like the push to always have our everyday numbers super high comes in part because we don't support the mechanism for people to just put the, to take the breaks, right? If we don't put in the system to take the break, you can't ever let someone leave because they can't ever come back. So if you make it easy to come back, you sort of have the loop of, well, this person took a couple month break, but it's okay because at this specific event thing, we're welcoming everybody back. So it's okay that they're gone now. And if we put those systems in to keep and cap recapture those players, seamlessly and easily, there's not gonna be as much of a push to never let ev anyone ever log out. Or is that, was there anything else from? <laughs> All right, is there anything else in the room for? Yeah. Right, so the question was about the kind of fuzziness of why players say they're leaving the game. So sometimes it's a very clear, obvious break, and sometimes they're just burnt out. Like, players will get burnt out of a game. Like, I have had games that I've burnt out on where I'm just like, I just need a break because I'm burnt out, right? Like, there's a lot of nuance, and I think that like a lot of people don't go back to the games when they took a break and i don't think we all have the data of some of like all the data is going to be super nuanced everybody has 20 different reasons why they're doing anything at any particular time um i think all that nuance is the data we need to be collecting more of to understand art the nuances of our players and i don't think we really fully understand that space between I'm never going to play again or I'm still part of your community, I just haven't logged in for a year. There's so much variation in the players and their motivations. And if we just have current players and lapsed players as our only buckets we put people in, we lose all that nuance. And I think we've lost a lot of that nuance, so I can't actually answer your question because I don't think we have the data and I really think it's important. So if somebody has the data next year, you can do that talk. <laughs> I would really love to hear it. <laughs> All right, is there, yeah, one more. And then I think we're running close to time. So yeah, go ahead. All right, so the question was about going back to your studios to try to get quick, easy wins of something you can do to start getting your dev teams on board. If your dev team and you don't have the data of how many of your players are in the lapsed player counts, who are your, who's lapsed for real, who's on a break, who's, you know, like you need to understand the motivational profile of your game to get the first buy-in, right? If you don't have the data, that's what I really think our first step is in those conversations of your, your devs are always worried about churn, right? They're worried about churn, but you need to kind of be like, well, churn is a multi-factor, so people have so many different 
things going on to like start with just get, asking the questions and getting the data because you're not necessarily going to come in and be like change this one thing in your game right because I can't tell you the one thing we all need to change in our game um, your quick easy win is getting those experiences from your players to show there's a need like you have to identify the need before we come in with solutions I do not want us to go all go home with solutions I want us to go home with questions Right, we need to go and ask the data. I'm not here to design their game. I'm here to get us to ask the questions of, you know, are you concerned about lapsed players? Are you concerned about, you know, these things? Like, and have the conversation. They, are they concerned about returning players? Have you ever asked? And they might say, yeah. Like, I had community write a guide. We fixed it. <laughs> Right, like someone in these big studios are writing the returning player guides in your community team. Talk to them. Figure out who put a, a returning player guide on your website. If your website doesn't have one, you have really bigger serious conversations. <laughs> right, we're just here to start conversations and ask questions. So I'm not here to give you all the answers, which is why I'm not presenting on any of my games. <laughs> There's a very deliberate reason why I'm asking here to ask questions. Because <laughs> I don't have the answers. All right, I think we're close to running out of time. So I think we'll go ahead and wrap up. If there's anything else, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, if you're in person, I'm happy to keep having these conversations. If you're online, I will check the Discord when I have time. Okay, thank you so much, everybody. This was super fun.